Parker's joining us now is Emily Parker, executive director of global content at Coindesk. Emily, the story is it has a lot of sort of its own lingo, its own players. We yes, still there's a lot we, there's a lot we don't know. What does it mean for the industry writ large right now? You guys just did a fantastic job of summing up a very complicated situation. So, yes, um, as you said, this story came to light after my colleague Ian Allison at Coindesk kind of had this incredible scoop looking at Alameda's balance sheet and showing that much of it was FTX own token FTT. So this raises a lot of questions about the crypto industry, in particular, two real weaknesses in the crypto industry. One is a lack of transparency. Like, why did this come to light via Coindesk and not via a more traditional means of disclosure. I mean, if Ian had not received that private document and not brought this to light, would ed people just not know this is going on? I mean, that's a real question about transparency and disclosures. That's one. And then the second one is this question about decentralization. So this is really ironic because crypto is supposed to be this truly decentralized industry. And yet over the past few months, we've seen power increasingly consolidated in two main players, one FTX and the other Binance. And now that is being reduced to one. I mean, you know, yeah. as you said earlier, FTX was really seen in Sam Beckerfield as this kind of savior of the industry. You know, he was like scooping up stakes in, in Voyager and BlockFi and, and, you know, trying to acquire everything. And now it's it's down to one player, basically, Binance. It's like, the you know, the 30-year-old genius, a little bit eccentric. Nobody understands him. Obviously, you just, if you don't agree with it, then you must, you know, you're not hip. I, I think we've seen some of these similar type stories before over the last, I don't know, three to 400 years um, let's talk about disclosure, okay? Because there are some wire stories out there. They may have been from you, Emily. Forgive me. It's all happening right away. Where Bankman Freed said that FTX had about $6 billion in withdrawals over a 72-hour period before Tuesday morning. That came in a telegram. Telegram is a messaging app, for people who don't know, to his staff. Now we have Sam Bankman Freed on Twitter saying, false rumors, everything's fine. Just from a very surface level, and I have a law degree, but I, I do not practice, there appears to be, to your point, perhaps some issue with public messaging here. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And again, this is an issue that goes way, way beyond SAM and FTX. For example, look at Celsius, right? The, the failed crypto lender. You know, right before Celsius paused withdrawal, Celsius was also messaging to the public, everything's fine, don't worry, you know, your money is safe. So this is a big problem in crypto where what will happen is you'll have these huge players and then you'll sort of hear these rumblings on Twitter and you'll hear rumors and you, you'll hear certain people saying, uh, yeah, this seems, this seems somewhat shady. I think we should be careful. And then you'll have kind of the leaders of these companies come out and say, you're just spreading rumors, you're just spreading FUD, you know, that's a big term in crypto, and basically shutting it all down. So I think this is going to de definitely cause another crisis of confidence. I mean, we've seen so many, I mean, we've seen Celsius go down, we've seen Terra go down, UST go down. Yeah. Um, you know, this is just this is just kind of like the last, do and, another domino to fall. Well, well, to your point about kind of a semi I mean, it's supposed to be the most decentralized industry. Now it appears that we have a basically a near global monopoly with one firm and maybe some other players. We have the election. If the Republicans get control of one or both houses, and we know what some of their commentary has, some of them have, have, have made about crypto, isn't it likely, given this, given Voyager, given Three Arrows, given Celsius, hard not to see some perhaps new and very tough regulation coming down the political pike. That's absolutely right. Look, I think crypto regulation is coming no matter what. Even if this hadn't happened, there have been so many red flags in this industry and so much concern about consumer protection that we will see crypto regulation coming in the United States or increased crypto regulation coming in the United States. The problem is, is that often the pace of crypto is faster than attempts by the government to regulate it because you're still seeing in Washington people trying to understand it. You're seeing partisan bickering. And, you know, we have to mention the midterm elections. Crypto is not the biggest issue in the midterm elections, right? I mean, crypto is kind of like inserting itself into the national drama today. But for the most part, it's not really a main issue for voters. So What's it's going to take a while for it to become prioritized, I think, but by policymakers. But yes, crypto regulation is coming. And I think we'll start seeing it, for example, with stable coins or with other areas that lawmakers have pointed out are a big risk to what's, consumers. What's it, in the Emily, US. what's it going to mean for crypto as an investment generally? Well, you know, I think that 
we, you know, we've been saying this all along. It's that this is a very like do your own research kind of industry and don't just believe what you hear. I mean, just because you have some exchange or you have some crypto leader out there saying everything's fine. I mean, don't necessarily believe that. Right. And I think this is what I mean, you know, this raises a lot of questions like were there other things that Sam Bankman fried wasn't transparent about? And I think that that's going to be an important lesson for investors. I mean, this is very interesting, too, because another moral of the story is how much of crypto is a non-U.S phenomenon.